Well, that, that's some really wonderful examples of your work. And Thank you. I think that you show, you really see kind of the variety of things. Can you tell me about maybe some of the applications? You know, what kind of things can people use graphic arts? So obviously, we saw some kind of advertisement type mm -hmm. things. But what other things do you think people can do with, with a, a vector-based graphic you know, mm -hmm. to, for work or for pleasure? Well, that's, an, that's a good question, too. There's, there's many different applications, I think, nowadays that anybody in any digital art form can use <clears throat> to use toward their career or pleasure. You know, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give an example. I had been asked to paint a mural. And I really wanted the, the style, the typeface that I used to be crisp and clear and to be not just hand drawn. And so I painted this mural. And in the program, I was able to take the words that I wanted to use, print them in large scale format, make a stencil, and actually use that stencil for being able to, to make those letters really nice, crisp, and clear, and even. So, you know, that form of artwork can be done to implement, you know, traditional artwork. Um, you can use, illust you know, as a graphic designer, my field is just completely open. One of the things that uh, I, I have is a vocational teaching credential. The reason why I went into that vocational teaching credential is because I think nowadays it's, it's, as it's a lot harder to get in in, in the colleges. It's a lot more expensive. And so a lot of young people are choosing kind of not to go that avenue and maybe to, to learn a vocation. Well, with graphic design, a vocation, you can actually learn how to do graphic design work. I used to work at a local newspaper laying out ads. You know, we'd get the clip art. The clients would come in, give us their words. We'd put it all together, and it would be placed into the newspaper for the next day. And we did that every single day. One of the nice things that I really like about graphic design is I often get asked to do newsletters for clubs or organizations. And with graphic design and graphic arts, it's also quick and simple to put all of the elements that you need to represent what they want to represent and do that on a monthly basis. So you're really more almost a media source as well as a, a visual source, because you really can get that, that information out there. Um, logo design is another, you know, branding, corporate branding is, is becoming a big, uh, a big business. You know, I remember you telling me a story about the um, the logo for uh, Quaker Oats, <laughs> and I, I love that story. Maybe you could tell that kind of the idea behind that, the, the what you well, share with people. I was asked to uh, come to school and represent graphic design to an eighth grade class. It was a career day, and so I went to different classes, and I, I really was surprised at the attention that I got from the eighth graders when I brought up some logos that they, without words, brought up the logos and said, so what do you think about this, and do you know what this is? And I used that, that logo of the Quaker Oats Man, which has actually changed throughout history, but it's one of those identifiable logos that, that when we go into the grocery stores or when we, you know, great example, Target. We are, we are constantly seeing that red Target. There's no words. They don't even say on the commercial sometimes what that is, but that logo is, is known without any doubt that that's the Target logo. So when you're representing a company as in a corporate branding or any kind of graphic design, what I try to do when I'm de developing a graphic logo for somebody is to make it really identifiable so that when they put themselves out there, people will know who they are just based on that one little visual stimulus. And I, I, I love that about graphic arts. And it's just the, the Target logo is just a couple circles. Could be, yes. <laughs> or the, the Quaker Oats one is really interesting because, like, I always remember, I think of the baseball or, like, the sports logos mm -hmm. and how they're the cutout. And on one side is color and the other side is the other color, and they're a cutout. And you see that shape. But if you took those two pieces away, you wouldn't have any shape. And right. if you looked at one side, maybe you wouldn't know what it is. Right. But it's such a simple cut out mm -hmm. like the Quaker Oats one mm -hmm. that is really identifiable. Mm -hmm. 
Well, tell me a little bit about um, your experience kind of working at, in a smaller town <laughs> and a smaller area. Um, you know, what kinds of work do you do here? And, and, and uh, what's your experience with that, as opposed to maybe like a, working in a big city? And Well, it's definitely a challenge. Um, in a small town, it's a little bit harder to seek employment, for one thing. So I've chosen to actually start my own business. Back in 1996, I created Davidson Design. And at, back in that time, uh, I was still going to school and thinking about pursuing more in my career. But now I'm faced with, you know, do I want to move from this beautiful small town community that I live in to go work in a big city and make the big bucks? Or do I want to just pursue going ahead and being a, what I would be called a freelance designer? What that means, basically, is I take my portfolio to separate people, like the, the dance studio. I did the, the dance studio for the next dance that's up. I probably won't do any work with that studio for another five or six months. But if I can continue to put myself out there and, and, and show people what I can give them, you know, there's an lo awful lot out there available for artists if you just want to go out there and put put the work. It's a, it, it takes some effort, but it is available. And it's a, it's a wonderful endeavor to be in business for myself. It doesn't take a lot. That's the other thing with graphic design. Um, I've made some investments, have the top computer programs and have the top computer pro, you know, computers and uh, lots of memory to hold these things because that is one thing that happens is, you know, I, I need those terabyte hard drives. But it is something that can be done within my home or a small business. I think it's really interesting what is happening with the world and the digital art, too, with uh, websites and things like that. In your opinion, where do you, which, what do you think is the future of this kind of stuff? What do you think is, where do you think it's going, mm -hmm. maybe in terms of what you do? Um, and I know we live in a smaller town where maybe people might say we're a little behind on things, <laughs> but still, from what, from what you experience, what do you, what do you think is going to happen with graphic design? Where do you think it's going? Well, I think the very top subject in that matter is paper. One of the things with graphic designers, as well as you know our entire industry of media, we, view, we use paper. As, as you may have heard, there are newspapers that are no longer presenting newspapers except online, digitally. And at first, it's an adjustment. I've had so many people come to me and say, are we going to get rid of books? You know, and, and maybe. We have Kindles and Nooks and all these electronic books. In fact, most of my books I use for school are online e-books. I'm not opposed to that idea because I believe that is the way that it's going to go. And I, I have that attitude kind of a, if you, if you really want to fight it, you're really going to be left in the dust. Because I believe that digitally we are in the beginning stages of what is to come in our future that I think is going to entail a whole lot of digital, uh, a lot less of that physical paper. Because, you know, let's face it, we, we really do have to think about you know, how much we tap our resources. And, and paper is one of those commodities that we have been tapping that we have to think about nowadays. So digitally, uh, graphic design, graphic arts, new, you know, the media itself, I believe, is rolling toward becoming a major outlet of all of our information. I hear the same thing from a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> the glass guy said almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we're almost out of time. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about where you see yourself going. I know you're going to be graduating here, and <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. But now that you're going to have your degree, the piece of paper, <laughs> or maybe they'll send it to you electronically, <laughs> <laughs> um, what, do you, what do you intend to do with that? What, well, and maybe just briefly, what, do, what kind of things maybe people can do with that? So, but more maybe about what you would do. So. Well, you know, I, I don't know. It was, I think, being uh, getting my bachelor's was probably more of a dream come true for me. It was that, you know, where I'm at in my age and, and, and life, and I thought, you know, it's just one more thing I really want to accomplish. And for me, I want to continue doing 
graphic, art, and design. I love when a client tells me, you have free reign and I get to design what I want, like that flyer with the dancer. That's my favorite thing. Great. Yeah. You know, it's really wonderful out there. Do you think that getting a degree is a good thing for people? Do you think that that helps? I do. I think that it is. it will help me. I do know that back when I just had my AA degree that there were certain limitations on jobs that I could get. And so I think it will help. I, th I think ultimately, but I don't know that it's necessary in order to be creative in that digital world out there to have a degree, a piece of paper. <laughs> Great. Well, that's all, it's really wonderful. I think it's really cool that we live in a world where we have those kinds of things and we have those venues. And I'm for all the stuff, uh, the new technologies. Mm -hmm. and. I, but we'll probably always have some books. <laughs> I hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much for joining thank me. Thank you. And thank you all for joining me. Um, next episode, we'll have another artist with some really wonderful things to talk about. And have a wonderful day.